From Fort Detroit to Flint, Elise shows us how an artist's contemporary take on history is shedding light on an industry not often talked about by illustrating the role black enslaved people played in making it successful. The backdrop, a vivid view of Michigan's frontier. I started to think about, well, a lot of people in Michigan, especially black Detroit, wear furs all the time. In the foreground, modern, fierce black women draped in fur coats. There's something to it. You, you can see somebody in the fur going to a grocery store, right? They are artist Mario Moore's real family, his pillars and inspiration. My mom's an artist, so I grew up around it my whole life. Their melanin melded with a part of American history their enslaved ancestors helped carry on their backs. They talk about the fur trade and being a, a big kind of money maker for Europeans, um, but they rarely ever talk about the slaves that were used to transport those furs. Um, you hear a lot about Native Americans who were doing the hunting, uh, Native women who were doing the trimming and prepping the furs to trade with Europeans, but you never hear about the black people <laughs> that were used to transport those furs and, and assist in, in everything that was needed. Moore's Revolutionary Times exhibit at the Flint Institute of Arts features more than 30 pieces joining three bodies of work. And you go from 1865 uh, or 1860s and then the end of the Civil War. And then the next gallery, you basically go into the Underground Railroad and you kind of go further back into time. And then the last gallery is about the, the colonial period and uh, French Detroit and French settlement um, in Michigan. And so you find yourself in the, the 1700s. We wanted to bring Mario here for several reasons. First of all, he's a Michigan-based artist. He's a Detroit native. And so he really talks about Michigan in this particular section of the exhibition. The FIA's director and curator of exhibitions says she believes the community would relate with this work, showing how the past and present connect, one floating on top of the other, a nod to the cultural significance of black fashion and style. It might have been a thing where you had someone's elder who was transporting those furs, and of course at that time, because they're enslaved, they can't buy a fur, they can't wear it, so your descendants um, began to wear those furs as an aspirational choice, as a, a desire to be seen as, uh, as human or as kings um, or queens. If it feels like you're in flux between then and now, that's just the way he drew it up. But what you take away from his extremely realistic, nearly life-size paintings is up to you. I just want to invoke curiosity. I want people to go see the work and be curious about what they're looking at. Reporting in Flint, Elise Ramey, WNEM, TV5. The Revolutionary Times exhibit runs until April 14th, and again, it features three bodies of work, and we only focused on a small part, so there's a lot more to see. You can visit the FIA seven days a week, and we have a link to its hours in the hot link section on WNEM.com.